Well, good morning, everyone, and praise the Lord. I am so glad to have you all joining me and Pastor Karn as we worship the Lord this day. Yes. Uh, this, um, is this the last Sunday? No. No, we got five Sundays in this mm -hmm. month. So this fourth Sunday uh, in the, uh, almost said the book, <laughs> like I'm ready to preach, in the year of uh, 2021, the month of January. And we are so happy to see all of you here. I'm just wonderfully, we're just wonderfully blessed to have you with us and uh, want you to know how uh, privileged we feel and are that you tune in on uh, Sunday after Sunday, Tuesday after Tuesday, Amen. and you allow us to speak into your life. Good morning, Sister Frida. Good morning, Brother Gregory. Amen. Brother and Sister Gregory. Amen. God bless all of you. Um, as I see you all coming in, we want to greet you in the name of the Lord. Uh, to all of the B-Top family, I see you, Brother Denson. I see you, Brother Quentin. Amen. To all of the B-Top family, uh, we want to say good morning, Sister Beverly. Uh, we want to say God bless you. Uh, we miss you terribly. Good morning to the Hughley family, Pastor Hughley. Thank you so much uh, for, for coming on in and, and thank you for all that you do in the body of Christ amen. for B-Top. Amen, amen. We, we bless the Lord for you. But we want to greet all of uh, our B-Top family, but then we also, amen, good morning, Sister Mary Thomas, want to welcome all of those of you that are not members of the B-Top family, but are blessed by the live stream and blessed by the word that God gives us week after week. Um, I'm telling you, uh, that's one of the things. Good morning, Sister Sonia White. Good morning, Sister uh, Deborah Denson. Um, that's what. Good morning, Sister Jan. That's one of the things that we um, that I think it's one of the benefits that have come out of this pandemic is that it has forced us to um, expand our methods. And good morning, Brother Joseph Warren, and for your faithful attendance. <laughs> Amen. Our California connection. Um, it's, it's forced us to expand um, our thinking and our methods. In, uh, and so we are reaching people um, and coming in contact with people that we would normally not come into contact um, because they would not have made their way to Wayne, Michigan uh, to worship with us physically. But they can certainly join us here uh, through social media and so as we are uh, as we are asking God to help us give us wisdom give us the people that will help us to make sure that we are um, doing this in a way that is optimal and uh, best for you um, I thank God that we are stretching ourselves and uh, and thank God for all of you that are joining in with us. Good morning, Brother Keith Hughley. Thank you for you and Sister Stephanie for your for your support. Amen. Amen. We can't do what we do without people like you. Yes, Sister Bev, we miss our B Top family so much. Good morning, Brother Jerry Perdue. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Sister Avon. It's good to see everybody coming on in and make sure that you are sharing the uh, sharing the stream and also telling others about it, because even if they are watching um, uh, other streams, the, all of these are saved on our Facebook page and also on YouTube. They can go at their own leisure throughout the week and they can become a prize. Good morning, Sister Sharon. Johnson, they can become apprised and aware of what the Lord is saying to us and uh, even support us if they would like to. So, um, but our main objective is to make sure that the word goes out and that you are encouraged. Amen. 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 You want to greet the people of the Lord, Pastor sure. Carmen, and then open us up in a word of prayer. Sure. Greetings to all of the people of God this morning. Thank God for another day. Those of you that are in the Detroit metro area, it's another cold day, but we know that the Lord is still good despite the cold and the snow that is starting to come, that is starting to come down. We praise God for his faithfulness to us. And so because of his faithfulness, we come and we greet you 
with Jesus' joy, recognizing that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Up just a little bit. As we go to the throne of grace, uh, we want to go in one accord and on one accord, knowing that if we ask anything yes. in his name, any two or three of us touching and agreeing, the word of God tells us that he'll do it. He will do it. Yes, he will. And so we go believing, touching, and agreeing, recognizing that God's promise is he will do it. Let's pray now. Father, we come to you this morning mm. in the name of Jesus. We come to you, Lord, thanking you and praising you right now. We give you glory for this, the beginning of another week. We thank you for bringing us through last week. We thank mm. you, O oh God, that things are as well with us as they are. Lord, we recognize that we are in a strange land. We recognize that due to this pandemic, life has changed drastically for the majority of us. We recognize, oh God, you still care and love us with an everlasting, unconditional love. And so we come to you from that angle and from that mindset this morning that your love supersedes even a strange land. We come to you, mm. oh God, saying we will sing the Lord's song in a strange land. Yes, we, we will. will praise the Lord in a strange land. God, there is death all around us. There is sick and suffering all around us. Death like we have never seen it before before in our lifetime. But God, we thank you and we praise you that you came to give us life. You sent your son to give us life and give us life more abundantly. Surely. Oh God, look upon our land. Look upon our, our country, oh God. Look upon our government. Look upon the people, oh Lord. Lord, there's so much going on in us, around us, uh, 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 in the news, there's so much tragedy which has become commonplace. But God, we pray right now that you would continue to keep your people. Oh Lord, we say amen to those that have gone on to be with you. Lord, look on those who are grieving, who are uh, experiencing the loss of loved ones, who are hurt, who are sorry, who are who are uh, disappointed that love loved ones have passed. Oh God, we pray right now that you would comfort as only you can mm -hmm. those who are bereft of loved ones. We pray in the name of Jesus for families right now. Families are in a strange land. Relationships are going crazy, God. But God, we ask you right now to calm the storm. We know that you're able. Our faith is looking up to you. You are our Lamb of Calvary. Yes, God. You are our Savior divine. Now yes. hear us while we pray. My Take God. all our guilt away. Mm. Oh, let us from this day, be God, holy. be holy thine. holy thine. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would breathe on us afresh and anew. Fill us, oh God, again. Touch us, oh God, again. We need your power. We recognize that we are powerless without you. We can't do anything without you. Touch us with your power. Fill us, God, with your power. Power to walk right, God. Power to think right. Power to love right. Power to do right. Power to be right, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we need your power, your Holy Ghost power. Help us, oh God, to recognize you. Help us, oh God, to rest in you. Help us, oh God, Help to us. accept your peace that passes all understanding, that guards our heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Help us, oh God, not to be anxious for anything, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let our requests be made known mm. unto you. And we know that the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard our hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Let the word go forth with unction, with power. Let it Follow, let it find, let it uh, set out everything that you have intended. Bless the man of God as he breaks the bread of life. You told us in your word that when your word goes out, it will not return to you void, but it will accomplish. And we agree with you. Yes, we, we agree do. with your word. 
Send your Holy Ghost power upon your people Please, right God. now. Open up our understanding. Help us, oh God, to learn what we should learn at this stage, yes, on God. this phase, yes, on God. this step, on yes, this God. journey, on this leg of the journey. Mm -hmm. Help us to learn what you would have us to learn. Help us to bear hardness as good soldiers, oh God. We know we need your help. We implore you right now for your help in the name of Jesus. Regulate our hearts. Regulate. Fix our hearts right now in the name of Jesus. Help us to think like you think. Help us to love like you love, we oh, pray, God. in the name of Jesus. In a loveless society, oh God, help us, we pray. We pray for unity in the church first. We can appreciate the new president calling for unity, but we pray for the body of Christ to be one as you and the Father are one. In the name of Jesus, let the body of Christ come together and put aside isms and schisms and political views, God, and let love prevail in the name of Please Jesus. God. Let love prevail, we pray right My now, God. in Jesus' name. You said that they would know us by our love. Help us to love one another despite differences in Jesus' name, despite skin color in Jesus' name, My we God. pray right now. And we will be careful to always, always. and continually give your name the praise and give you all the glory and we thank you for answering prayer in Jesus name amen and amen wherever you are just lift up a hand lift up ah, your hands God. and give God praise right now hallelujah thank you, God. Thank give God, you God praise right now thank hallelujah you God. He thank deserves you, it. Thank he you. deserves your hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory he to deserves God. your praise. Oh, He's yes, worth he does. it. He's worth it. Hallelujah. He's worth hallelujah. it. Totally. Hallelujah. Totally worth thank it. You, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank what a you, wonderful God. Savior. Thank hallelujah. You, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name right now. Bless your hallelujah. name right now. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Glory the Lord. Glory to God. Whatever is going on Glory to God. in the world or in your life. Glory. Glory, we glory, are glory. to bless the Lord at all times Thank you, Jesus. and his praise Ooh. is to continually Thank you, Jesus. be in our mouths. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Carmela and I would like to also thank all of you that have contributed to the capital Amen. campaign. Amen. Even last week, I think last week, Pastor Carm brought the word and so we neglected to talk or to, to recognize those that have given. Amen. Amen. Yes, Aunt Connie, hallelujah. Glory belongs to him. Oh, yes, it does. Glory belongs All to God. Glory. Um, but we want to thank, uh, for, for, thank those that contributed from last week and then this current week. Thank Amen. You. We heard again from Stephanie and uh, Keith Hughley, uh, from Sister Doreen Throckmorton, from Sister Tammy Young, and also from our own son, Caleb. Caleb gave again. So thank you so much for Amen. your consistent giving. I still say we're going to reach our goal and exceed it. Amen. So we see, I, I see our Cleveland connection coming in. Sister Vicky, Sister Pam, Sister Tammy's bless on. You. Amen. Bless God you. bless you, Brother Kenneth Michette. I saw your, your shout out to me and Pastor Carm. We love you. Bless you. Everybody that's come on, Sister the, the Hall family. I see a new viewer, I believe, Sister Gina. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but it's good to welcome. see you on welcome. here. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, Sister Shante Scott. Amen. And Connie, we're continuing to pray, continually praying for you. Amen. I saw the Faulkners come on. Amen. God bless all of you, Brother Jerry Perdue. Amen. Bless you. Amen. Got bless some new viewers. So let's Amen. go into the Word. Now uh, we want you to be prepared. Not next week, but first, the first Sunday in February, um, we will be uh, having communion. And so prepare yourselves. We'll put it in the email blast to have your sacraments, uh, some cracker and some juice. Amen. And we will share in the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday in February. It'll be in the email blast, but I just want you to prepare yourself. Good morning, Sister Tamara Henry. Good morning, Brother Gerald Harden. Amen. Another Cleveland connection. Amen. Yes. Amen to the Harden family in Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. God bless all of you. All right, so prepare for communion on first Sunday in February. Well, let's get into the word. Now, I want to 
Amen, amen, Sister Anna Harden. God bless you. I miss you. It's been a, it's been way too long. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, I want to begin by just by just saying I know that I will not be able to get to all of what's in my spirit. So um, this is this this is going to be uh, the opening up. Um, of something that um, I may need two or maybe three weeks to get out. And I want you to prepare yourself because, and pray. I need the intercessors praying because I really do believe that what I'm going to share in these next couple of weeks is really going to help uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ move forward. And this year... Our theme is through Christ I can through Christ I can and um, I have heard that scripture Philippians 4 13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me thank you sister Deborah I'm gonna take my time um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me um, and when that scripture was taught to us as a child, I had a concept of, of what the strengthening of Christ would look like. Um, because I started out in church as a very young person, I still had superhero mentality. <laughs> Strength was, was seen as seen as something that Superman or Aquaman or Godzilla displayed as a, as a young child. Strength is what I saw. Good morning, Sister Darlene Harris. Well, strength is what I saw in my father who was uh, a strong uh, uh, athletic person. Um, that, that represented strength. I didn't know anything really um, about the trials of life that adulthood would bring. Um, I didn't recognize some of the events of life that would happen, not, not just in childhood, but as I would grow and mature into adulthood and what it would mean to be strengthened by Christ. Um, but living some years now, um, in my 57th year of life, I can say that I have a better appreciation for the words, I can do all things through Christ. Good morning, Sister Tiana. Love you so much. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, takes on a new meaning as you walk through life, it, 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 it does, it does. And, um, and, and I understand and see that the words of Paul to the Philippian church in Philippians 4 verses 10 through 13 have become more personal to me than I ever would have thought. And I just want to read that. Uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 10 through 13 but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again though you surely did care but you lacked opportunity not that I speak in regard to need for I have learned in whatsoever state I am to be content I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, to both abound and suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh my God, we, 
we can encourage others with those words when they're facing difficulty and when they're facing challenges. We just tell them, you know, you just have to trust the Lord and say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. And the, the quoting of the scripture, uh, the theory of the scripture, the philosophy of the scripture, how we look at it and dissect it, let's say from a, a biblical study point of view doesn't really give you an appreciation for how it actually works out practically. There's a difference between theory and practice. You can have you can have a test uh, about cooking or culinary arts by what you've learned and read in a book. You, you, you can, you can look at recipes uh, and know that cookbook inside and out. You can, you can know the measurements. You can have everything that you need in your head. Good morning, Sister Joy. I got I owe you a call. Good morning, Sister the, to the Jackson family, Jackson Five. You you can look at a, a recipe book. You can have you can have 50 books on culinary arts, how to cook meat, how to cook bread, how how to braise, broil, fry, bake, you know. Saute. You you can then go into the bakery uh, on the baking side. Uh, you know vegetables, vegan. You can learn it all from a book, but nothing replaces the practical application of what's in those books. What reference do I have uh, in baking a cake and baking it and testing till done unless I actually do it? It's one thing to read it and have the theory, but it's another thing to actually stand in a hot kitchen and actually do what's in the book. I wish I had some help here. I, I'm, I'm talking better than y'all saying amen. There's a difference between theory and practice. And so, we want to come out of just quoting the scripture that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me because that's a big wide net of all things. Some people have applied that scripture to things and people, situations and circumstances that are outside the boundary of the will of God because they believe all things means all things from their perspective. <clears throat> okay, I can't really go down that alternate route because I'll get into something that takes me down a road I don't need to go down. But just let me say that there are people who include in all things some things that are contrary to the will and the word of God. I'll never forget some years ago, we, my wife and I, this is many years ago, um, somebody y'all don't know and ain't gonna know, but we were having a conversation and uh, this person was asking us to pray for them because they believed that they found their husband. They, she was praying for a husband and she said 
that that she really believes that God answered her prayer and that she was going to marry this man. And we said, wow, lots going on in your life. Okay. So, um, you know, where is he? Well, just tell us something about him. Well, he's a pastor. Okay. Okay. He's a pastor. Yes. Pastor, is he, not only does he, is he called the pastor, but he's actually pastoring a church right now. Okay. Uh-huh. And uh, without going uh, fully all into it, it, we discovered that this pastor she was talking about was married with children. I waited a few moments right there because that's exactly how silent it was when me and Pastor Carm were sitting there and she said it. The, the moment of silence we just had, that's how silent it was in our living room, in our home, that day, that hour, that minute, those seconds. And we had to tell her and let her know that that was not her husband. He is someone else's husband and you're, you cannot marry him. God, God, God did not tell you that a married man was your husband and that is an alternate route that has no connection to the will of God for your life. So uh, we've got to be very careful about how we apply the word of God to our selfish ambitions, selfish motives. We have to put in check some of our desires because we will pray amiss seeking to devour from out of our own lust quoting scripture all the way i can do all things through christ that strengthens me and and you're full of manipulation and hatefulness and uh, some people are just they're motivated out of anger because of something somebody did to you and it's just it's a it's just all about revenge and showing them and and it's it's about how other people will respond we've got to make sure that we are properly uh, and rightly dividing the word of god there's a whole lot of people that would love for me to be deep, to be more deep, but I have found out, <laughs> yes, perfect example, Sister Naomi, and God bless you, miss you, praying for you and Brother Craig, amen. Uh, uh, there are people that really miss the practical application of the word of God by hanging out in theory. You can talk about loving everybody like Jesus when all you hang around is people who love you and people who all always agree with you. Jesus said the world knows how to love it, each other. Listen, the love that God displays is a love that hangs and dies on a cross for an enemy. And so, <laughs> and so, I'm, I'm trying to get folk to understand that you can have all the theory, you can, you can know the Greek and the Hebrew so well you can speak it as if it was your native tongue. You can go to seminary and get a PhD. 
But that will not, does not, cannot be a replacement for practical application of the word of God. Because there's a whole lot of folk with doctor before their name and letters after that can't be faithful spouses, can't be good parents, are arrogant, stuck up, unapproachable, have not the love of God in their lives. That's the problem we have right now in our world, in this nation. We've got people who say that they are Christian because they're Christians <laughs> in theory, not in practice, because to actually practice it, you come into contact with people who must be loved and must be embraced with the love of God that only comes from not just reading in a book, but actually putting into practice what's in the book. Just like I said, just because you know a recipe does not mean you can cook. I'm going to say that again. Just because you know a recipe doesn't mean you can cook. I remember coming up, um, I was uh, an older teenager at our church uh, there in Reading, Pennsylvania. And uh, there were these two little boys. Uh, I think I was about 16 or 17. And because my younger brother is 13 years younger than me, um, and because I, my brother and I were latchkey kids coming up, we learned how to cook. We learned how to cook early. Um, we had to fend for ourselves because when we came home from school around three o'clock, my mother didn't get home from work till about 6.30 and we were hungry. And so, yeah, a few times I almost burned the kitchen down, but I learned how to cook when I was very young. And one of the things that I like to eat and I love to make is cream of wheat and even grits. I, I, I like cooking both of those. Um, and, and, and the thing about cream of wheat is that it's supposed to be smooth and silky. Okay. And so these two little boys, we, I can't remember what the context was, but we started talking about cereal and breakfast cereal. And, 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 and the, 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 the topic of cream of wheat came up and they said, oh, oh we like, we like cream of wheat. Well, yeah. And the one, the older one said, yeah, I like how my mommy makes it. It's, it's got, it's got all the, it got, it has all the lumps in it. And their eyes were just as, as bright and had smiles. They got excited about cream of wheat that was lumpy. And I didn't want to make her feel bad because she was an earshot. I, I, I didn't have the heart at the time to tell them, well, you really haven't had cream of wheat the way it's supposed to be if it's got a lot of lumps. Okay, you like the lumps tomorrow? Okay. See, some people have learned how to eat cream of wheat by somebody who didn't know how to make it. And I'm going to have to make you some. I'm going to I'm gonna have to make you some tomorrow. I'm going to have to make you some of my cream of wheat. Uh -huh. not, not just made with water, but with some half and half. And to, Okay, I, I, I can't give away all my secrets. But anyhow, there's, there's something about knowing what the recipe says on the box, but to actually make it is a whole different story. If you're going to make some good gumbo, and, 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 <laughs> thank you, Brother Quentin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, 
Uh, so getting out of, of theory into practice is what Philippians 4.13 is all about. It's, it's what it's all about. Let me just give you one little secret. It's better to make it with a whisk than a spoon. Okay, all right. So Paul says, I have learned. See, that's what takes things from theory to practice. I have learned whatsoever state I'm in to be content. That takes the word out of theory and puts it in to practice when you learn. And so when we start throwing out this word, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I want to take some time during this year to talk about some specific things that you and I can do. And I want to start off by saying I can endure. I want to come heavy because uh, uh, when we quote that scripture, we're normally thinking about something that we want to do that we have not done yet. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me is a scripture that we usually have uh, a destination in mind and we're saying that I believe God will strengthen me to do that thing that's over there yonder in the, in the future. I want to take it out of a statement of hope for something in the future and put it right in the now. I can endure. That that's that's one of the things that I can do. That you know, all means all. Yeah, but let's start getting specific because some of you are going through stuff right now that is forcing you to put your theory into practice. Okay. <laughs> You're in the process of learning right now. And I want to encourage somebody that enduring is a part of all things. I can do all things that strengthens me. Okay, so it's, it's a word that's a winning word. You, you win with a word like this. I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthens me. So let me say this. We have victory and we gain the prize through endurance. Sometimes winning is not tied to how well you can Sometimes uh, winning is not tied to how well you can fight. A lot of times when we think of winning, it's tied to fighting. Sometimes winning is tied. Watch me here. Watch me here. Sometimes winning is tied to how well you can wait rather than how well you can fight. Sometimes the way we fight is how we wait. Uh, 
If, if we were in church right now, I would say, touch your neighbor and say, it's better to learn how to wait sometimes than it is to know how to fight. Because in the, in the strengthening to do all things, when I'm talking about enduring, waiting is more important than a skill to fight. A degree from the seminary or from the college can't really help you wait. Money in the bank won't help you wait, okay? Nothing external, nothing of value that you possess in this physical world will help you to wait. It's part of what must come from within a person, not outside of a person. Okay, I hope you're following me because I'm going somewhere. Waiting is enduring, all right? Patience, patience is enduring. It's it's enduring. Um, and so this word enduring actually means to remain under. It means steadfastness. Y'all with me? It means steadfastness. It means remaining under. It means not running away from the experience, but remaining on that's endurance. Endurance is staying in the race, staying on the path, staying in the spot. All right. It means when I'm enduring, I'm being stretched. I'm being pulled. There's a tension. I've got a choice, but I choose to learn to make myself content right here because right here is where I'm being developed. Okay. Okay. You, you can have the theory of nutrition and weight loss. Y'all don't want me to turn this corner. You can not know in theory, this is how many calories I need to eat a day. These are where these calories need to come from. This is the amount of exercise that I need to burn off these calories. Uh, you can know it. You can know it. But when your eyes wake up in the morning and all you can think of is that salted car caramel frappuccino from Starbucks, uh, with a big old baked good to go with it. You can know it in theory, but if you don't put it into practice, I must just stop right there because you know exact. Uh huh. Yeah, you didn't want me to go there, but I, you know, I'm trying to make things clear. I'm trying to make things plain. I'm trying to put it out there in a way that's practical, not theoretical. Y'all, y'all, okay. The problem comes in is when I am endurance, endurance challenged. When, I, when I'm not patient, but I'm impatient. When, when, when I'm through with remaining under, 
That's when I need to be quoting the scripture. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Listen, listen to how it is in the Greek, how it reads in the Greek. For in all things, I have strength in the one strengthening me. Uh, I, I, I think I, somebody might have missed that. We, we read it out of the King James or the New King James or the New Living Translation. They'll say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. But listen to how it reads actually in the Greek. For in all things, I have strength. See, that's, that's endurance. I can do all things can actually be speaking of a future moment. But when I, but when I say, for in all things, I have strength, that means I got strength where I am right now. Uh, uh, as 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 our assistant pastor uh, David Hughley would say, right here and right now. For in all things I have strength in the One who strengthens me. Somebody just say that out of your own mouth. I in all things I have strength. In all things, capital I N, in right now, right where I am, in all things, in the bad relationship, in the, 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 the period of suffering, in this health crisis, in this financial crisis, in this pandemic, in this time when I'm separated socially, uh-huh, uh-huh, in all things, I have strength. I have strength in the one who strengthens me. I ain't got strength in my money because money can get funny and there's some things money can't pay for. Money can't pay <laughs> to keep a virus from going up your nostrils. There's some things God has to help you to endure through. Okay. Okay, money can't buy you a good night's sleep. Buy you some nice sheets. Buy you a nice bed. But in all things, I have strength in the one that's strengthening me. I can endure. So let me let me just let me just throw this out here and then we'll be through for this for this time. The, it, the problem or the issue, the challenge comes when I have a vulnerability to impatience. And to some degree, when it comes to enduring, all of us do. But when impatience is a part of our experience, that's what I want to talk about today. We got to deal with impatience. It is an enemy to endurance. When I'm not willing to stay under, when I'm not willing, huh, oh God, to go through, and not just go through, but when I'm not willing to let the experience I'm going through do its work in me. Look, 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 look at what, look at what Paul said in Romans chapter five, uh, verse one. He said, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the glory, in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, not only that, but we also Here's, here's, here's our problem right here. We also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces 
patience. Y'all don't want me to read that. Y'all y'all don't want me to read that. You don't you really don't want me to read that. He said, "We rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces endurance perseverance if if I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me that means I can endure I can't tell you how many times during a workout with a personal trainer you want to give up the personal trainer knows that you've got abilities beyond what you know mm -hmm. they are trained in how to train you so when you want to stop when you feel you've done enough when you feel you've had enough when you feel you've done enough you just want to give up and have a few choice words while you're at it because they're telling you one more and you're saying no more but they want you to persevere and push and stretch and press because in that process you are being made stronger so tribulation works perseverance and perseverance leads to proven character okay okay see that's why people lack character today is because they've never learned how to endure through tribulation they think everything's supposed to come easy they think they can run away from every problem run away from every challenge quit when they get good and ready quit because somebody else dropped out quit because some other contrary wind blew into your life and just busted up your schedule took you off your focus and you didn't hang in with the process because of some external stimuli but I came to, to, to tell you you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you and you can endure because that endurance brought about by tribulation actually stretches you and develops your character. I know I know some of y'all right now are saying, well, God, how developed do you want me to be? God, really, God, how the, how the, how's this really supposed to work? It, it, you just how developed do you want? He wants us to be mature. Patience is remaining under and so when I'm not patient these are three things I want to leave with you when I'm impatient for those that have taken notes in this part one when I'm impatient it motivates the wrong impulses When I'm impatient, I am motivating the wrong impulses. I'm waking up impulses in me that are going to resist the process. When, when I'm impatient, which is why I need to ask God to strengthen me with the strength. Uh huh. Like I said, in all things I have strength through the see through the one that strengthens me. I've got to get strength to endure from a source outside of me because my inclination is to not endure, not stay in the fight, not be in the process, and so when I'm impatient, I 
am motivated by the wrong impulses. I need to be motivated by faith, by the word of God, by good teaching, by sound doctrine, by good c communication with those I hang with. That's what needs to be my, and ultimately through the one that gives me strength. In all things, I have strength in the one who strengthens me. So my strength comes from a source outside of me to me. That's number one. Number two, when I'm impatient, I move my trajectory. A trajectory, I'm not just trying to use big words, I'm trying to use the words that adequately, adequately describe what's in my spirit as I give you this word. A trajectory is a path. A trajectory is a progression. A tra trajectory is a line of development. It, it's supposed to be going up. The trajectory is supposed to be gaining, growing, learning, experiencing, getting knowledge, getting wisdom. And when I'm impatient, I move the trajectory from good learning to negative learning. The trajectory moves to regret of what I didn't stick with, what I gave up. Oh, help me preach this. What I gave up on, what I threw away because somebody messed with my confidence. I let some external force, some external action, some external event change my course. And impatience changes that trajectory of growing and learning and stretching to constricting, being small-minded, uh, uh, being stuck in a prison of my own thinking and in my own mind. Help me preach this, God. Ah, but I've got strength in all things through the one that strengthens me to stay right here and endure. So that I can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when I'm impatient, I'm motivating the wrong impulses. I'm, I'm motivating the impulses that want to make me clock out on somebody. I'm motivating the impulses that make me want to cuss somebody out. I'm motivating the impulses that make me just want to walk away and say to the heck with it all. I wish I was, I wish I was preaching to some real folk here. I'm not talking about theory. I'm not talking about uh, springtime and I just love everybody. You a lie? No, you don't. You don't even you don't even love everybody like that in your own family. But God is trying to stretch you. And every time he's trying to stretch you and give you strength to do it the way he said, you don't want to remain. You only want to be strengthened for the things you want to do. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh yeah, I'm preaching right now. I, I ain't. I, 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 oh my God! If I had a hammer right here, but see, we don't need a hammer organ. I need your spirit to be open to receive what I'm saying right now. Listen, you have a trajectory to grow, to learn, to be mature. That's why he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying, the, that's the trajectory, the edifying, the building up of the body of Christ until we all come to the measure of the fullness of the stature 
of the fullness of Christ. That's the trajectory. Is to be mature. Is to grow up. To grow up, not grow down. See, endurance is like what we see, the picture of the vine in John 15. Uh, uh, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. And, and one thing that, 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 that you have to do with a vine is you have to, when it's growing, you've got to tie it to the trellis. You've got to tie it to a stick. You've got to tie it to something so that it grows up because the natural tendency of the vine is to grow down, is to be weighted with its own weight and go down into the dirt where it can't get sunlight and it will die. But, and so if you're going to tend the vine, it's got to be tied to that stick so that it, it gets trained how to grow up, not grow down. I just said a word right there. I hope you tucked it away because somebody is resisting being tied to a process that is causing you to grow up. Help me preach this Jesus. Whew. Let me get to number three. Let me get to number three and then I'll be out your way. I'll be out. I'll, I'll be out. You, you can go and get your dinner. So when I'm impatient, it motivates the wrong impulses. It moves my trajectory. It says, I know how to grow better than this experience can teach me. I can teach myself. No, you can't. You can't teach yourself any more than a kindergartner can teach themselves mathematics. I'm, I, I've been 21 longer. I've been grown a long time. Yeah, you've, you've grown in years, but you stuck somewhere in adolescence because every time somebody tries to correct you, you take it personally. Okay, you got that one for free. I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. You haven't even grown to the point where somebody can tell you the truth. Without becoming offended. Number three. Impatience mutilates the righteous path. Y'all got that? It, it motivates the wrong impulses, it moves your trajectory, and it mutilates the righteous path. To mutilate means to vandalize, to damage, to deface, to destroy, to mangle. When I don't persevere, and when I don't endure. I am sabotaging my own path. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Though he falls, he will not be utterly cast down because the Lord will lift him up. See, that's the one that strengthens you. Uh, uh huh. I'm on a righteous path, but if I'm impatient, I mutilate that path. I vandalize. I become my own vandal. I become my own saboteur. I sabotage my own growth and develop development because I refuse to be challenged. I refuse to be stretched. I refuse to be exercised but in all things I have strength through the one that strengthens me I don't know who I'm talking to I really don't I'm, so, so therefore I'm talking to all y'all 
and I'm talking to myself. I can do all things and I can endure. I can endure not because of how well I can fight, but how well I can wait. Can I pass the test of being on a job that looks like it's killing me? Listen, Jesus, Jesus talked about the last days in Luke. I, it's, the scriptures right there in your notes in Luke chapter 21 verses 8 through 19. He's talking about uh, 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 about. His people not being deceived for many will come in his name saying, I, I am he. Uh, I, uh, there's going to be some false prophets and God knows we got some false prophets right now. Folk telling people what they want to hear. Folk being uh, uh, mired in political issues and trying to trying to merge the spiritual with the political. It's from hell. It's damnable. It's the devil himself. Oh my God. Your endurance has nothing to do with a political party or some political hotbed issue. Your endurance has to do with the life you're living right now. Your personal life. Some of y'all need to come off of social media so much and some other other stuff that you're in and need to Say, God, what is what am I supposed to be doing to stay on the trajectory I'm on right now that will help me grow and develop and be stretched rather than the one that is just created for my comfort and my convenience because I can endure. And I don't want to be the person that sabotages my own growth, sabotaging my own growth by being, uh-oh, picky about who God brings in my life to help me grow. Uh, well, you know, if if they wasn't so harsh, if they didn't say it like that, and I just don't like them. There's something about them. And I heard it. And then, oh, uh, yeah, you ain't ready to endure because you're picky. Uh, uh, my father-in-law, Percy McClendon, used to say about folk that did, that was picky at the, at the dinner table. Uh, you know, I, you know, they come into dinner talking about they hungry. And they, you put the put the dinner plate before, them and they say, no, "I don't eat that. I can't. I don't eat that. I don't like that." And he was like, "Anything hungry will eat. If you hungry, you'll eat." I want to know: Is there somebody who is hungry to actually? Be stay on the trajectory that stretches you and makes you stronger and makes you better. Anything that really wants to progress and to grow will endure. Not because you have it in you, but <laughs> in all things, I am strengthened by the one who gives me strength. In all things, I've got strength. In the one who's strengthening me. In other words, if I decide to do better and if I decide to go for better for me uh, in, in the context of what God has for me, then he will agree with me and give me strength on my journey to do just that. And my impatience will vandalize my own path. Listen, because you're hot-tempered and you're short-tempered, that's nothing to brag about. Most likely, you are sabotaging your growth. I don't know who I'm talking to, but this is something that the Holy Ghost is putting his finger on today. Say, the reason why it looks like you're stagnated and not growing and not going anywhere is nothing to do with your intellect, has nothing to do with your potential, has nothing to do with your gifts and your skills. You got all that together. You're all intact. But you refuse to undergo any process that stretches you beyond your impatience. Let me 
finish with that scripture in Luke 21. He, he, he says, he talks about all the things that are going to happen. Nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom. There'll be earthquakes in various places. Famine and pestilence. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from the heavens. Oh, they're going to persecute you. Deliver you into the, into the synagogues and the prisons. You're going to be brought before kings and rulers for my sake. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Listen, there are some folk that are talking about all the things that are happening and they're saying, we gotta fight. We gotta fight politically. We gotta fight in the courts. Listen, all your fighting doesn't mean squat because he says, Jesus, this is what Jesus is saying. All this stuff is going to go down. The persecution is coming. And you're not going to be able to stop it. But Jesus says, you don't fight it with your politics. You don't fight it just at the voting booth. He says, it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. I'm going to testify under the pressure. I'm going to testify under the persecution. I'm going to be a light in a dark place when these things start happening. He said, this is going to be your moment to shine. This is going to be your moment to testify about God, not to try to gain some political power, not to become like a Pharisee and a Sadducee, not to try to pull the levers of, of, of manipulative uh, uh, actions behind the scene. No, you are going to be strengthened with might on the inner man so that you can be a testimony and a representative of what it means to grow under pressure and be stretched. Okay. All right. Okay. Listen to what he says. You will be hated by all for my name's sake. Verse 19 of Luke 21. But in patience possess ye your soul. <laughs> in endurance possess ye your soul. Here's how the New Living Translation puts it. By standing firm, you will win your soul. Uh, uh, here's how here's how the ESV uh, English Standard Version puts it you uh, uh, it says by your endurance you will gain your life I don't know about somebody else I, I want to gain my life I want the life that was that that Jesus came to give me the abundant life and see that abundant life is not People writing checks and me just running to the mailbox and say, oh, look at my abundant life. That, that, oh, look, look, I, I got another check. I got to know the abundant life that Christ came to give you is to give you strength to bear up and be stretched under pressure so that you grow up into the person that he died on the cross for you to be. He didn't just die on the cross for you to come to church and sing praise songs and shout and eat a good dinner on Sunday. That's not why. He died. He gave his blood. He went through the pain. He went through the agony so that you would be a soldier in the army of the Lord who knows how to endure through life and be stretched and to, be, and to grow and be exercised to maturity. By endurance, I gain my life. By being stretched beyond what I could do, but being strengthened by the one who strengthens me. I grow, I mature, I achieve that which I never thought I could achieve or attain. I get through what I thought I never could get through. I bear up under weight that I never could bear up under because I have learned whatever state I am to be content because in all things I have strength 
in the one who strengthens me. All right, I, I, I got to wrap this up today. I, I told you I'm getting into something I can't get out of. I, I can't get out of it. I can't get out of it. But just know this, that in, 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 in Romans, we started in Romans chapter 5, that tribulation works endurance. Tribulation works patience. And then we saw in Luke 21, 19, in endurance, we gain our lives. In patience, possess your soul. In, in patience and in endurance, I, I get my life. That word is remaining under. Remaining under. I'm going to stay right where I am. Getting strength from God so that I mm, am motivated by godly impulses so that my trajectory is not moved but stays on track. And so I do not mutilate my righteous path. I don't become a vandal to my own success. I do not become a person who mangles and destroys my own destiny because I can't endure hardness as a good soldier. I'm so sick and tired of Americanized Christianity That's fluffy and full of head knowledge. All you gotta do is claim the promises. All you gotta do is claim the that's a lie. You can claim promises all day long, but if you have not learned how to put into practice the art of enduring, you're going to fail. I don't care how many quick scriptures you can quote. From how many, all from nine versions of the Bible have a degree to go with it. But if you have not learned how to endure, I'm going to say it like Paul said, it's dung. It's dung. It's chewed up grass by a cow. All right. But I can endure. Oh, thank you for hanging with me with this part one. Oh, God, I'm into something I can't get out of easily. I got a whole lot more to say on this. But I just want, I just want to hear somebody. <laughs> I just, I want to see, so I can't hear you, but I just want to see somebody type, this was good for me, Pastor. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. We we gonna go deeper next week. But I, I want you to know today that I can I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can endure. Sometimes I'll have to say that with tears flowing out of my eyes. Sometimes I'll have to say that while I'm hurting. Sometimes I'll have to say that when I have plenty. Sometimes I'll have to say that when I'm in need. But I will learn how to allow the process to stretch me into maturity. I don't know who I'm talking to. I'm talking about fact. I guess I do. I'm talking to everybody that's listening right here. But let me tell you. Let me tell you. I'm not preaching something thing to you that I just want to deposit into your spirit that I have mastered. No, I'm going to tell you, impatience was one of the things that had a grip on me. I felt I had gone through enough as a kid that I wouldn't have to go through much as an adult. I said, God, you packed enough disappointment and pain and abuse into my early years. These years ought to have me coasting. No. No, that was then, this is now. And the fights that I have before me have nothing to do with fighting as a child. I got to fight like a man. You've got to fight like a woman. You've got to fight like a grown-up in God. 
Oh my God. You can't be stuck in the pain of the past and endure because it's going it's going to mutilate your righteous path. So you have to say, God, I don't have the strength. I don't have the know-how. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In all things, I have strength in the one who strengthens me. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. He will give you the strength to endure. He'll tie your life to an upright stick so that you grow toward the sun, not toward the dirt. So God have your will in me. Stretch me. Teach me. Mature me. Perfect me. <laughs> Beyond just quoting scriptures and thinking there's some magical formula with the words that I speak that's going to make everything okay. Sometimes things will only turn out for my good as they're working together. They're working together, not just when it's 75 degrees outside and the sun is shining and everything's pleasant. I don't even have to turn on my air conditioner. It's just perfect. I'm being stretched when the bad weather comes. When the hard days come. When my nerves are frazzled. And my money is low. And bills are coming. And the health is compromised. Ugh. And the list goes on. I can endure. I can remain under and let this process mature me you know I'll be honest with you I wish I could do it without help from anybody I wish I wouldn't have to involve anybody even God I, 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 I just wish I could work it out in my own mind, but I can't. And that's why Paul said, I have, I've learned. This is something all of my training and teaching couldn't teach me. I could only learn it by being at polar opposites, by having a whole bunch and having very little. I've been everywhere on the spectrum because I've learned that it takes Christ to strengthen me to actually grow and develop and mature. And I can't let impatience rob me because it motivates the wrong impulses, it moves my trajectory, and it mutilates a righteous path that has been set before me. So God, thank you for strengthening us. Thank you, Lord, for taking us from theory to practice. Thank you for loving us through the journey. Thank you you're not like religious folk who throw us away because we've not met their standard <laughs> We don't engage their silly process that just pleases them. Thank you, Lord, for letting us know that our development is not tied to some system of denominationalism. 
and righteous and self-righteous church systems. But that our learning comes from our own personal commitment to remain under to allow tribulation to work endurance to allow the workout to produce a better system to bring heart health vascular health mental health lord just as 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 work Con, as consistent workouts help our bodies to stretch by remaining under the circumstances you have allowed we are stretched we are matured we grow and it makes us better testimonies It makes us more tender toward people. It makes us better witnesses. It makes us more self-aware of our own vulnerabilities and weaknesses so we don't appear as though we've already arrived, but we are pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. And we thank you now and we praise you in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name that is named in heaven and in earth. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. God bless you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, listen, I don't know. It is probably going to be a part two and a part three to this because I'm, I'm down in the weeds now. But uh, there's some other things that I want to give you in this word about I can endure. All right. And so we'll see you all next week. Remember, we're pre preparing for the Lord's Supper um, and Holy Communion on the first Sunday in February. Thank you for coming in to all of you that came in while the word was going forth. It's great to see you. Love you all. Make sure that you're sharing this. Make sure that you're letting someone else know uh, about this word, they can go on Facebook or to YouTube and they can catch any of the words that were, have been spoken almost going back a year now. Amen. And we'll see you on next week. We're signing off for today, but thank you for, for allowing me to come on into your home or wherever you might be. Love you so much. And be top, uh, be praying because um, we've, uh, we've contacted this potential lender, told them what we've done, told them what we uh, did during our capital campaign, told them that money is still coming in, but this is what we have. We, we brought what we have to the table. They've just asked for some additional uh, financial, uh, uh, financial report, reporting, and so we are working to get all that together, and um, so we'll be sending that off sometime this week, but we are engaged in this process uh, for a building. So um, just be, be in prayer because I know that God has the place already. Amen? And so uh, when we have news, we'll share it with you. But we've done our part and are continuing to do, continuing to do our part. Uh, and now we're just going to put it in God's hands and let him do the rest because we've done all we know how to do. And I am confident of this very thing that he that has begun a good work will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So God bless you all and love you so much until next time. And um, Sister Joy, great, great to see you. I'm going to give you a call this afternoon. I got to give you a call. Amen. Talk over some things. Pastor Carm told me that you all talked about some things and I, I definitely want to talk to you. All right. God bless you all. See you all next week. God bless. Bye-bye.